thank you, colleagues. Thank you, organizing committee. Uh, thank you, colleagues, friends. It's good to be here. I'll be telling you about uh, our work on infectious diseases. Uh, this slide shows top 10 infectious diseases uh, in 2002 and associated deaths due to infectious diseases. What you see in this slide is that in just one year alone, respiratory infections killed nearly 4 million people. HIV and, or AIDS killed nearly 3 million people. Diarrheal infections killed nearly 2 million people, and the list goes on. In total, just in one year alone, more than 17 million people died due to top 10 infectious diseases, clearly indicating the, the burden of infections on human health and also on animal health as well. Looking at these numbers, the most distressing aspect to me personally is that these numbers have remained significant despite our advances in antimicrobial chemotherapy and supportive care. So it doesn't matter how many new antibiotics or antimicrobials that we come up with, still millions of people are dying annually due to infectious diseases. So we ought to be doing something about it. And these are not limited to developing countries alone. Even the developed nations are also affected by infectious diseases. And in here, I'm showing that Queen of the UK is on the run from these bugs. So it's affecting both developing countries as well as developed nations. Now, previously, research has been focused on looking at antibiotics from soil bacteria, yeast, and plants, garlic, and so on. What we are suggesting and what our hypothesis and our idea is that these are the potential sources of antibiotics and antimicrobials for the future. We have exhausted our searches for novel antibiotics or antimicrobials from uh, soil bacteria, yeast, plants, and so on, and that search should continue, but these can be the potential novel sources of antimicrobials. So I'm going to spend some time that why do we believe that? So first, looking at a cockroach, um, when, we, um, uh, when we're dealing with children, um, patients, we are often telling them to always wash their hands with antibacterial soaps. There's one new antibacterial soap almost every month in the market. What the, the hypothesis that we have is that how come these organisms such as cockroaches, they are able to survive in the most polluted environment and thrive on the most unhygienic condition. So while we are trying to protect ourselves and our children against those unhygienic conditions, at the same time, creatures such as cockroaches, they are able to thrive in the very same polluted environment and come across those superbugs that we are unable to ward them off from uh, uh, causing disease. Uh, similarly, when we look at snakes, we know that they eat um, rodents, rats, and rats are germ-infested. So the question is that while we have to worry about non-contaminated meat, yet these species, they are able to thrive on such animals without getting infections. So how is it? that cockroaches or snakes, which are living on these un, uh, in these unhygienic condition, uh, feeding on this matter, which is full of superbugs and, uh, and potential uh, infectious agent, and yet they are able to ward off disease, but same agents are able to produce infections in humans. Also about uh, crocodile, um, I don't know how many of you have seen uh, feeding time of crocodile in a zoo, but if you go there during feeding time in, in a zoo, I tell you that the smell is completely rotten. Uh, and when I went there for the first time and I saw that um, uh, the, it was crocodile feeding time, so I asked the question from the zookeeper that why is it that the smell is so bad? And the answer was that because it's crocodile feeding time. So I looked at the meat and I was surprised to see that the meat was completely yellowish and gooey, uh, that one cannot imagine even standing next to that 
the rotten piece of meat, let alone eating. And yet crocodiles, they were jumping six feet in the air and trying to grab a piece. So clearly suggesting that why is it that they are able to eat this rotten meat and yet thrive on that while we have to cook this meat to death with all the curry powders and, and all that. So clearly suggesting that these species, they have developed some mechanism by which they can protect themselves against infectious agents while we have to protect ourselves using antibacterial soaps and, and so on and so forth. And this is something I often tell students as well, that what we fail to forget is Homo sapien is only one species among millions of other species. And we have been on this planet relatively recently, only about 10,000 years old we are on this planet. While species such as cockroaches or crocodile, they have been living here for millions of years. So surely they know a thing or two how to evolve, how to adapt, and they know the means by which they can protect themselves against other infectious agents. And that is our hypothesis, that we ought to be learning from these species and pay them respect and find out how we can use that knowledge for the benefit of the humankind. And that is what we are researching on. So that's our hypothesis, that animals living in polluted environments, they possess antimicrobial, uh, antimicrobials to counter pathogens. And that's the, there's a short video on this. Hello, I'm Rukaya Siddiqui. Because insects, like cockroaches, live in the filthiest places where they come across superbugs, it makes sense that they must possess some powerful molecules to defend themselves. And that is exactly our hypothesis, that cockroaches possess antimicrobials. This work has been highlighted throughout the worldwide media, Science News, BBC and other media. If you type cockroaches and Naveed Khan, who is my mentor, in Google UK, more than 50,000 websites come up, which suggests the public interest in this field. So let me explain what has been done. Cockroach brains were dissected out, as well as other tissues, and tested against superbugs, MRSA, and neuropathogenic E. coli. We were surprised to find that just one microgram of crude brain lysates can kill more than a million superbugs. The plate on the right shows bacteria mixed with the solvent. On the left hand, you see the bacteria mixed with brain lysates. Presence of brain lysates wiped out all bacteria. The major problem at the moment uh, is infectious diseases, and we have uh, more than 14 million deaths annually worldwide. And I think the worrying thing to me personally is that these numbers have remained significant despite our advances. And even more worryingly, that some of these bacterial pathogens are developing resistance against many of the antibiotics that we have at our disposal. In the last five years, there has been only one new antibiotic approved by the FDA. Yet we are seeing increased number of infections due to superbugs. We hope that our novel research will lead to the first antimicrobial compounds from insects that may have the potential to save thousands of lives, especially in the developing countries. These compounds can be synthesized in the lab into cost-effective treatments. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you. So the, the relevance to cockroaches and why we are working on that, as I already explained, that these are one of the uh, most hardy insects on this planet. They can survive without food for more than a month. They can survive without air for more than 45 minutes. They can be submerged under water for more than 30 minutes without dying. They can tolerate a radiation level more than 15 times what can kill a human being. Um, They've seen it, uh, almost everything. They've been here for millions of years, approximately 300 million years ago. They were on this planet, suggesting that they must have mechanism and ways and um, that can help us protect ourselves against those conditions, be that environmental disasters or be that superbugs or infectious agents. So in my personal view, when we talk about that uh, humans are going to be wiped off from this planet, and we often say that who's going to inherit this planet from us, and we mention the word viruses, we mention the word superbugs, but in my personal view, roaches are also right up there as one of the species that can potentially inherit this planet from us. Um, and probably move to Mars, as mentioned by the early speaker. Um, 
So uh, my hope is that uh, through this um, research that we can bring the first antibiotic. There have been no antibiotic from such species. Uh, as I mentioned, that much of the research has been focused mostly on bacteria, yeast from soil, and plants. So this novel research, we are hopeful, can yield some interesting data some, uh, 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 that, that we have at present in the lab, but, but bring about the first antibiotic or antimicrobial into the pharmacy in, in Malaysia as well as uh, worldwide. And my hope is that finally cockroaches will uh, find their way into the affection of the human race. So when you see them in the bathroom, do not step on them. Uh, bring them to me. We'll make something useful. <laughs> make something useful out of uh, them from us. Uh, as I mentioned, that I'm not going to go into the data, uh, but we have some got, got some very interesting data from cockroaches and got, got some very novel antibiotics. But very quickly, I just want to show a few slides on uh, our work on snakes as well. We're using cobra um, because they're scary. Uh, <laughs> And I don't work on them. It's my students. They're very brave. Uh, so we collect their blood, dissect their tissues, uh, and then we try to find out whether they have any potential antibiotic-like molecules in them. Very similar research what we are doing in cockroaches as well, and we found novel antibiotic molecule. Uh, and coming to uh, a crocodile, um, again, in uh, crocodile, these are the kind of conditions that the crocodiles live in. This is the meat being fed to crocodile. Completely yellowish, uh, yellowish, completely rotten, and this is the water that they live in, very green. You would not be having your lunch today. <laughs> um, and um, so we, it took us two years, and I would request through various forums as well to the government uh, that do allow us to work on such species. Crocodile or alligator, these are protected species. It's very hard to find them. It's very hard to test our hypothesis. So when we try to convince the government and the Minister of Health and, and in other countries as well, it's very tough for us to convince them that we do need these species for our research to test our hypothesis that we are going to find something very unique in these species. It took me two years to get one crocodile uh, and, it's, uh, and four trips uh, to the uh, government offices to convince them that this is an important area of research and we are the leaders uh, globally in this area. So eventually, we were, uh, one was donated, one crocodile, which we uh, got from a crocodile farm, and we brought, brought it into our labs, and we found that uh, and this is the uh, team that was sent uh, to ensure that they know how to handle. There's no, um, and then we dissected. Uh, this was one interesting day in the department, and we got sufficient meat to have a barbecue party. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, we were told that uh, crocodile is not halal, so we cannot have that meat. So we had to simply use it for research. And we found, again, some very interesting molecules in crocodile, which have potential not only antimicrobial properties, but also anti-cancer properties. Remembering that uh, crocodiles, uh, their lifespan is more than 100 years old, and they're always uh, um, uh, in heavy metal, polluted environment and they're always sunbathing, right? So they don't put any creams or anything on them. So suggesting that they must, and they don't get cancer. So why is it that they don't get cancer? And this is an article, again, we have recently published in BMJ, uh, that they, because they don't get cancer, suggesting they must have some very interesting novel molecule which are protecting them against cancer. And I'm not going to show the data, but just to give you the, that that's the hypothesis that we were working on. This is uh, Team Crocodile Dundee, um, that we, uh, and this is that um, important species. We thank that to work on this. And with that, I will end, and thank you for your attention. <laughs>